Alex Jones, Game of Thrones, predicting Zionist false flags. It sounds crazy, I know, but just hang with me, hear me out. There's a lot of evidence that backs this up. So before I get to this scene, this clip from Game of Thrones, this predictive programming, and this prediction from Alex Jones, you have to understand the full context and have some background info here. So you have to understand the Third Temple prophecies and the Messianic Jewish prophecies. So if built, the Third Temple would be the third Jewish temple in Jerusalem after Solomon's Temple and the rebuilt Second Temple. Although it has not been built, prospects for completion are important to Jewish eschatology. So Jewish eschatology is the area of theology and philosophy concerned with events that will happen in the end days and related concepts according to the Hebrew Bible and Jewish thought. This includes the Jewish, the coming of the Jewish Messiah. So I put together a little video of uh, some Christian Zionists here who are obsessed with rebuilding the temple. So here, check this out. After 70 AD, the Jews were scattered throughout all of the world, and there came a time when Jews were not even allowed to live or visit Jerusalem. They wanted, of course, to rebuild their temple, and thanks to the Temple Institute, which is just behind us, all the plans are already made. The uh, sacrificial altar has been recently constructed. The priest robes have been made. Pretty much everything is ready to go. Robert, help us understand, why is it so important to the Jewish religion to rebuild their temple? What is the significance of the temple to them? Well, Chris, there's many important reasons, but the primary reason, the number one reason, is the Jewish people do not believe their Messiah will arrive until that temple is rebuilt. There's a rumor afoot that the Jewish people, the Israelis, are planning uh, to rebuild the temple, or at least there's a move among them that people want to rebuild the temple. Now, there so is I no temple. So I could go on and on and show you more of these clips of all these people, these Christians and Jews talking about how bad they want to rebuild the temple. They're totally obsessed with it. That's the bottom line, the takeaway you need. And they've been obsessed with this rebuilding the temple for a long time. Here's the Temple Institute, and it talks about their history of building. This is important here for later. Attempts to rebuild in modern times. So they had uh, rabbis and scholars were creating public interest, and one of them sent a letter to Rothschild asking him to purchase the entire land of Israel. And if the king of Egypt didn't go for that, just, just the Temple Mount to buy. And this is uh, 1836. Rothschild family, just a quick side note, instrumental in the founding of Israel. They're on the money. They created or designed and funded the Capitol, the Knesset, the Supreme Court. And this is all due to biblical prophecy. Ben Gurion's interview here in 1962, Ben Gurion was the first prime minister of Israel. This is his plan for what he thought the world would look like in 87. He says, in Jerusalem, the United Nations, a truly United Nations, will build a shrine of the prophets to serve the Federated Union of All Continents. This will be the seat of the Supreme Court of Mankind to settle all controversies among the Federated Continents as prophesied by Isaiah. So this is all biblical, apocalyptic, messianic prophecy in Isaiah for Israel to rule the world when the Messiah comes. So here's JTA. This is just an article about how there's all these different groups and they're growing and they're going from the fringes to the mainstream and getting into politics to rebuild the temple. Here is just to show how obsessed they are. This is a Wired magazine, Apocalypse Now. This is about a, a tech Jewish guy, tech uh, millionaire, who wants to have a hologram. Look at this hologram above the Dome of the Rock and that that's gonna be a loophole to bring back the Messiah so that they don't have to destroy it. See, um, under this scheme, Jews and Christians would get a biblically accurate temple without the raising. That means destroying the Dome of the Rock. Well, I guess you got the, the hint now. The false flag is gonna be blowing up the Dome of the Rock. And uh, that it needs to be done before the temple can be rebuilt. And here's a little opinion from Haritz, 2017. The temple will be rebuilt. And here's a little compilation. Oh, before we get to that, the obsessiveness of the temple. Here's uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu back in 1990 talking with a top rabbi in Israel. And this is what he says, okay? <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
So they've made progress, but the Messiah, which is the Messiah, still hasn't come. That's the main concern of these guys and the people in power, like Netanyahu. You're not doing enough. You gotta do more. I'm gonna die, and the Messiah is coming. So here's years back. This is Menachem Begin. He was the first, uh, or he was the first Likudnik prime minister. That's the party that Netanyahu's from. And he's talking about he's going to go to America and meet with the president, and he needs to get blessed by this rabbi. And what does the rabbi say to him? Here it is. In the diaspora and in the holy land, and to have a real peace as a preparation for the coming of Messiah speedily in our time. There you go. The Messiah coming speedily in our times. So the compilation is, so we have a problem. We got to rebuild the temple for all this biblical prophecy to come true. But there's a big problem, the Dome of the Rock in the way. During the tribulation, a Jewish temple will be standing on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. But as you know, there's not one standing there today. Rather, you have the Muslim Dome of the Rock standing there. When will the Jewish temple be rebuilt? How will it be done if the dome is still there? What would you say if I told you that there are plans and preparations underway right now to rebuild the temple in our lifetime? And it's going to be standing there. They restore the temple sacrifices and everything else. There is one problem though, John. Everything has been prepared. They have the utensils. They have the men who study the priestly duties. I met recently when I was in Israel with the man who is the chairman of the Sanhedrin, the 70 wise Jewish scholars that operate the temple. He said he has his garment hanging in his closet. In his Pause right there. The Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin is, uh, has minted a coin that Shit. That has Trump on one side with Cyrus, and then oh, I must have I must have closed that one. Anyway, back to back to this clip. What is he going to do to get rid of the Dome of the Rock? His home, ready to put on and report to the Temple Mount. So all the preparations have been made. There's one problem: that gold dome building, the Dome of the Rock, sits on the spot where the Temple has to be erected there on the Temple Mount. And I've got to tell you, during the Gulf crisis, when I first moved to Jerusalem, we would hear the siren warning of an incoming scud. Most of us ran into our sealed room, put on our gas mask. The Jews living in the Jewish quarter in the old city of Jerusalem ran to the Temple Mount, started to pray, Dear God, let one of those scuds hit the Dome of the Rock. Of course, scud... So they, it's obvious here that the Jews want the Dome of the Rock destroyed. Here's some more of them. Jews and Christians. This place has been a holy place since the beginning of the world and is in essence the center of the world. And we believe that the rock inside of the Dome of the Rock, which is called in Hebrew the Evan Hashitiyah, which in English means the foundation stone, is the foundation stone of the world. That that is the place from which God spread out the earth. Right now it's in the hands of the Arabs. Those darn Arabs! We want to change that status to uh, return the temple. We want to change the status to return the temple to its glory and restore the animal sacrifices and let the temple stand forever. To its glory, rebuild the temple, restore the sacrificial service. I believe that uh, there will be a temple built. The Dome of the Rock will somehow be done away with. I have no idea. There's been plenty of earthquakes up there that can solve it. So we're talking bombs, possibly. We, we're praying that bombs blow up the Dome of the Rock, Muslim bombs, or that there's an earthquake. Uh, Saddam could, or not Saddam, but maybe someone from Iran could shoot a missile that gets off target and blow the Dome of the Rock. We kept hoping for that, by the way. I kept hoping one of Saddam's missiles would find its way over to the Dome. I don't know exactly how it's going to be removed, but it is not part of uh, the end times as far as the Bible or Christianity is concerned. I don't think Judaism either. There's no place for that mosque. It has to be removed. My Bible says there's no place for that mosque. It's got to go. For the first time since the past two
So all the preparations are being made and the temple will stand forever and the animal sacrifices are going to start back up. Here's some Jews interviewed in Israel saying that they want to blow it up. So that's the attitude. They want the dome gone to rebuild the temple. And uh, so that's what this is. This false flag is going to be destroying the Dome of the Rock. And this is not something new. This has been tried before. Plots have been foiled. Here's New York Times Archives, 1984. Jewish terrorists in Israel is sentenced to 10 years. That's all they got. Conspiracy to blow up the Dome of the Rock, one of the Muslim world's most sacred monuments, which is on the site of the destroyed Jewish temple in Jerusalem. And here's a guy. Uh, he was a part of the group, the Temple Mount, with a plot, participated in a plot to don't blow up the Dome of the Rock. And here's Haritz, 84 plot. This is a guy from the Likud party saying that they almost succeeded in a plan to blow up the plot. And that's not the only one. There's also one in the 60s. Some Christian Zionists. Here we go. The man who torched Al-Aqsa Mosque. So he lit the mosque on fire. And why did he do it? Um, it was an Australian Christian, demented, they say, 28 years old. He was 45. And it says, where's the detail? I have it down here. 28-year-old uh, Australian sheep shear saw himself playing a central role in the building of the new temple which the Messiah would enter. First, however, it was necessary to clear the space for the temple by destroying the structure that he believed presently occupied the ancient site. And, oh, that's not the point. And there's also been a more recent attack that was foiled. This is a Christian American who was trying to blow it up. Now let me tell you about a story that uh, you probably haven't heard elsewhere. Now, it's a fascinating story, and it's about uh, terrorism in the Middle East. You would think you might have heard about it. This guy named... Nope, not with the Zionist-controlled media. You're not going to hear about this one. ...named Everett Adam Livix. Uh, he went... Adam, look. He went from the United States to Israel with a plot to blow up holy sites. Oh, my God. I... And he was caught with bombs. And what was he doing? A reason he might want to do that is, it turns out you need to rebuild a temple there. And if you're a good, you know, fundamentalist Christian, you believe that Jesus cannot return unless they rebuild the temple. And it's inconvenient that the mosque happened to be in the area where they need to rebuild the temple. There you go. So they want to destroy the Dome of the Rock. The Jews and the Christians are obsessed with it. So Jesus can return, or that's what the Christians think. But the Jews think that they're going to rule the world and have a the whole typical stereotypical New World Order agenda. Global government, global currency, one world religion, that kind of thing. So, let's start with these predictive programming from Game of Thrones. Why should we even... What is predictive programming? First question. Well, we see a lot of it with 9-11. Starting with 1979, an Israeli spy, Arnon Milkan, made this movie Medusa Touch with the high, climactic scene, a plane crashing into a high-rise building. And this was right around the time that they were having, here's the photos here, right around the time they were having a conference in Jerusalem about terrorism that the Netanyahu family was hosting. And Arnon Milkan is an admitted spy. That we got this from The Simpsons, another predictive programming. Oh, I'd love to see New York. We could all go with the bus company's special super sitter fare. Nine bucks. It's like the big nine, the towers right there. This is shortly before. Maybe it's not uh, predictive programming, but there's so many of them that we don't just throw them away and not look at them, including this uh, one I'm about to show you. So this is one more. It is the lone gunman pilot episode shortly before 9-11 where the whole plot was a plane is hijacked to crash into the, the World Trade Center. Go watch the whole thing for yourself. I'm going to crash the plane into the World Trade Center. There it is. Crash the plane in the World Trade Center. And this is one of my favorite. Again, we don't know if this is if this is predictive programming. If there's a connection here, it could be a coincidence, but we're still looking at it. We're going to have one world of the main event right here after this commercial. 
official message. Twin Towers, take it, Mean Gene. This with me at this time, the slickster, a key of the African dream and a big boss man. Gentlemen, is this the match you wanted all along, or are you going to continue your terrorist attacks? On Did the you hear that? Terrorist attacks. So we got Twin Towers, terrorist attacks. This is in 89, a few years before the 93 bombing. Or are you going to continue your terrorist attacks? All right, thank you, Vince McMahon, Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, Randy Savage, the lovely Elizabeth. Three people Gets working worse. as one with one goal in mind. To defeat, or should I say demolish the Twin Towers? Demolish the Twin Towers. Yeah. Hulk Hogan, you talked about the triangle of love. Jesse Ventura says there's a problem. Explain. Well, you know me, Gene. You get right to the heart of the matter with that question, brother. It's the love, man, that's going to supercharge the mega powers and tear down the Twin Towers. Oh, I miss it. Tear it. Yeah. Hulk Hogan, you talked about the tri- Should I say demolish the Twin Towers? Yeah. Hulk Hogan, you talked about the tri- We're torn. My muscles were yeah. torn. When her bone was bruised right there, I felt the pain. Hulk Hogan felt the pain, and I can still feel the pain right now. And Hulk Hogan, that pain won't stop until the Twin Towers come crumbling down. <laughs> oh, yeah, right now, tonight, on prime time. Yeah. Until the Twin Towers come crumbling down. <laughs> oh, yeah, right now, tonight, on prime time. Yeah. It's just weird. Twin Towers come crumbling down on prime time. No wonder so many people think this is predictive programming. So here's the clip. This is Game of Thrones. Spoiler alert. Uh, this is when Cersei the Queen blows up the most religious site in the capital. And their symbol for their religion is a seven pointed star. So watch this. <laughs> And it's destroyed. Does that remind you of anything? Now, con considering that there is, a, look at this video, in search of tunnels under the Dome of the Rock. There's been rumors of excavations and tunnels and uh, below the Temple Mount. And that's what happened in Game of Thrones was there was, a, it was the sept with the seven-pointed star was blown up from underneath uh, bombs going off in tunnels below. So, okay, you may think it's crazy that I'm pointing to this, but take a look at this stuff. Game of Thrones. The secret Jewish history of Game of Thrones. That was uh, the forward. Next article is the Jewish Telegraphic Agency. Game of Thrones, seven Jewish facts about the hit series. We got the, the show's creators, not the writer of the books, but the creators are both Jewish. And the producer is Jewish. You'll see her in a second. Here's Times of Israel, a hidden Israel reference in Game of Thrones. If there's a reference here, could the blowing up of the sept be a metaphor or predictive programming for the destruction of the Dome of the Rock? I think it's possible. Producer of the show, here she is in 2012 at the Comic-Con panel, and again at 2015 at the panel. She's one of the top producers on the show. Her name is Carolyn Strauss. She was the former president of HBO until 2008, and it says here, being of Jewish descent in 2015, she signed as one of the 98 members of the LA Jewish community an open letter supporting the proposed nuclear agreement between Iran and six world powers led by the United States as being in the best interest of the, interest of the United States. So she is a president of HBO now she's the producer of Game of Thrones. Very likely she could have some connections to some of these Rebuild the Temple people. So I'm just throwing it out there. This could be predictive programming. So the next bit of predictive programming is Alex Jones with his prediction. And there's a caveat here, though, because Alex Jones is a total Zionist shill, as I've been documenting lately, as a lot of people know. So this prediction he gives is not... The, what is actually going to happen. It's the cover story of what they're going to say. So he's saying, well, I'll just show it to you. Unfettered.
Islamic takeover happen in Jerusalem, guaranteed within one year, Dome of the Rock, all of it is going to get blown sky high. There you go. He says Muslims, ISIS, Palestine, Muslims, Arabs are going to blow up the Dome of the Rock. That's their most, one of their most religious holy sites. And which is just, this is the ridiculous prediction by Alex Jones. He's a lot smarter than this. He knows all these, all about this uh, messianic prophecy and rebuilding the temple. So for him to say, to predict that the Muslims are going to do it, makes me think that he's trying to prime his audience to accept that the Muslims doing it, but it's really going to be a Zionist false flag. So why should we listen to what Alex Jones has to say? Well, he kind of predicted 9-11. He said it was going to be blamed on bin Laden and that it was really the government that did it. And that we're aware of who the terrorists are if you pull this. This can stop this Hitlerian Reichstag event. Toll free number. July 25th, 2001, this is what he says. I want you to find out these statements were true. Why the White House about preparing for martial law. I want you to let them know that there is any terror. terrorism. We know who to blame. The point is, if any terrorism comes, it's from this government. And if there was an outside threat like a bin Laden who was a known CIA asset in the 80s running the Mujahideen War and whose family builds all the military bases over in Saudi Arabia right now and sits on the board of Iridium Satellite. Okay, so Alex Jones predicted 9-11 pretty accurately. And a lot of people suspected that he could have had some inside knowledge about that and that he was kind of being the controlled gatekeeper, controlled opposition to steer everybody away from Zionist involvement into it's an inside job and dead ends. And he's in the last few years, he's essentially betrayed 9-11. So he predicts that the Arabs are going to blow it sky high. And that's just one thing. Now, I have a few other connections that are going to make this sink in way harder. In one year, Dome of the Rock, all of it is going to get blown sky high. So he said this on December 6, 2017. And so we have uh, till the end of this year, basically, to see the, the dome getting blown up. Will he be right? So I, this is another example of Alex Jones possibly knowing something about the Dome of the Rock. This is another video that he put out when this is the time frame when Obama had the we vetoed or we didn't veto we abstained from vetoing the resolution that would say Israel's settlements are illegal so he had some huge exaggeration that Soros wants to overthrow Israel and why is Obama doing this but the title of this video is why is Obama putting Israel in the crosshairs and the thumbnail is odd because when you think of Israel, you don't think of the Dome of the Rock. You think of like the Star of David or a menorah or Netanyahu or something like that, or maybe just the map of, of Israel. When you think of the Dome of the Rock, you think of Muslims. I mean, it's essentially a mosque. So why would he have a target on there if this isn't some kind of weird symbology? Because he doesn't, in this video, he doesn't talk about the Dome. He doesn't talk about any of this stuff. So it doesn't fit. And if that's not enough, so one of these guys who's all about Trump and prophecy is this guy, Trey Smith. He's got a YouTube channel. He's really popular. And he's the one that's saying Trump is Cyrus and he's going to rebuild the temple. Here's a little bit of him. I commonly hear it said that this man right here, Donald Trump, is like a modern day Cyrus. I find that absolutely fascinating. Before the 2016 and presidential he's the, election. He's not the only one. A lot of people are saying this. But Trey Smith, predicting Trump doing all this kind of uh, prophecies and numerology with Trump. And he's a guest on InfoWars' show. So InfoWars is totally aware of all this Israel worship and this rebuilding the temple stuff. I am Millie Weaver, and you are watching the InfoWars Christmas Spectacular Extravaganza. Now, we have an awesome guest who really I'm a big fan of him, Trey Smith. Many of you guys who don't know him, he has a very popular YouTube channel, and he makes the most interesting, amazing miniature documentaries about 
you know, prophecies, esotericism, the Bible, Israel. So these are these are Trump prophecies that he's Cyrus and he's going to rebuild the temple. And he he's on Alex Jones's show. Here he is in studio with Darren McBreen. He says it, he's a Infowars employee. He says, "Yes, Trey Smith in the house." And his headline is Rick Derringer and crew in the house, never a dull moment. So here's Rick Derringer. He went with Trey Smith to Israel to film this documentary. And he's a guest on the show. And listen to the kind of stuff he says about Trump and this prophecy. God seems to also really like numbers and mathematics. In fact, Pastor, what the, what is the year that we're coming up on that he's finding these prophecies of Trump in. It's the year 5777. It's in that same book of Daniel, Daniel 925, where God gives the exact day and date that Jesus Christ would ride the donkey through the front gate of Jerusalem. The year right now, the, the Hebrew year is 5776 going into 5777. That changing of the new year takes place October the 3rd of this year. It's wow. when we move into the Jewish New Year. So here's what he has said about uh, Donald Trump. Prophecy is also pattern. So you get the picture. Oh. Look, he's showing Isaiah there a second ago. And he's saying it's all going to repeat again and Trump is the new... <laughs> The new Cyrus, and he's going to rebuild. He's a builder, that kind of thing. You get the point. But anyway, this guy goes on Alex Jones' show. So Alex Jones predicting that the Muslims are going to do it when it's the Jews that want to do it. It's like I just see right through it. I'm very suspicious of this. And it gets even crazier, even crazier. Look at this part. So... There, when I was doing this research of blowing up the Dome of the Rock, this came up. It is uh, I Pet Goat 2. It's a short cartoon, and it's got um, all this Illuminati symbolism and Antichrist prophecy stuff. And I took a few of the best little clips out, but you should definitely go watch the whole thing for yourself. It's only about seven minutes, but let's get that started. First of all, a goat represents Baphomet. And this is I Pet Goat 2. And I, I there's go online and look up this thing. There's all this analysis on YouTube. People trying to figure out what this is. And very interesting commentary. Statue of Liberty with a hexagram, a star of David below it. Wonder what that means. Antichrist being born. This represents the all these people in suits are supposed to be Wall Street. Or this is what people speculate. Is this is supposed to be Wall Street, and this is the Antichrist being born out of it, and he's gonna destroy the monetary system. Antichrist, all seeing eye pyramid, fire in his eyes, and then the church, hear the cross back here, starts to crumble. So go check out the whole thing for yourself. But so in the comments of this video, everybody's saying he's the Antichrist. This is Illuminati worship and uh, New World Order stuffed. 
stuff. A video is a sign of things to come. This Jesus figure is the Antichrist, the leader of the future one world religion. Notice economic collapse, then World War III, followed by the destruction of Islam and the inclusion of pagan religions. This shit is about to start. And one more. He is Antichrist, not Jesus. So here's a slow-mo of the scene where they destroy, the imagery looks like it's destroying the Dome of the Rock on the Temple Mount. Here's this zoomed in slow motion. the close-up so you know it, I came across this just yesterday and then look what pops up the creator of this just happened to be interviewed by Alex simply Jones. breathtaking that is I pet goat two and um, the gentleman that made it is going to be joining us here via video Skype uh, in just a moment he, the archetypal images in it a lot of people have projected onto it their own thoughts, their own ideas, and they say the most powerful art out there uh, you know, is basically designed to do that. Some people have said it's satanic and it's, it's programming us. Louis Lefebvre is uh, joining us now um, from a, a city north of Montreal. He's a 3D animator, director, and entrepreneur, and uh, he joins us. Very excited to have him on. Again, you just saw the piece. We're going to analyze it here. Well, Louis, do you need to be burned at the stake? Is this is this actually satanic programming? All right, Louis Lefebvre, amazing artist, and pe people can claim you're the devil if they want, but there's no doubt that you're an amazing artist. Thank you so much. Thanks very much, Alex. Wow. Well, very, very powerful, ladies and gentlemen, and it gets you thinking. Gets you thinking. So I, I watched this interview yesterday and it was so odd because it didn't seem like this guy made the video. He may have, but he said he had some help. Who knows who those people were? Definitely into the occult and, uh, and prophecies. But all the comments on this video, on this Alex Jones interview video, are saying the same thing. It's that this guy's lying and that Alex Jones is covering up the truth behind this movie. Here, look at this. Wow, he is total, totally lying. Clearly, the figure is not the Christ. This is insane. So nobody buys this creator of this uh, cartoon's explanations of what this stuff means. Am I the only one who took this Christ figure as the Antichrist? This guy didn't make the video. He's just a bullshit artist. Does this for spin after its release. Confirmation that Alex Jones is a shill and this director is just another one of the Illuminati puppets making money a few more this guy is a liar he's hiding the portrayal of the ushering in of the antichrist he has certainly been paid to make this video a lot of predictive programming like the dome of the rock being blown up in this movie which is way too deep for this trojan horse aj to understand i don't feel like we're getting the full picture so everybody go to the, the video it's still up you can see it everybody in the comments doesn't buy this after watching this clip, I'm thoroughly convinced that Alex Jones is now working for the New World Order. Anyone that has seen I Pet Goat 2 flicks know that this is riddled with Illuminati references and that the director acts like it's just some weird flick. So all this stuff with Alex Jones, he makes this bizarre prediction. He has this weird thumbnail that doesn't make any sense showing the Dome of the Rock in the targets. He's got this Trey Smith biblical prophecy guy in studio and on the show. And then he's got interviews with this guy who made the pet goat video with all this Illuminati antichrist symbolism that in Jones just like whitewashes the whole thing. So what do you guys think about this? Am I crazy? Or, or am I, am I on to something here? <laughs> Cause, uh, you know, the, all the Jewish connections with the Game of Thrones and, and Alex Jones and his history of predicting the false flag correctly. And here's another interesting aspect of this. Sheldon Adelson, he was Trump's biggest campaign contributor. He's This is the New Yorker says he's the kingmaker. So he gives more money than anybody to Republicans. He's a huge Zionist, huge Zionist. Here is a Guardian. Sheldon Adelson backs Trump trip to Israel after $100 million pledge. Here's Guardian again. Sheldon Adelson to give $25 million boost to Trump's super PAC. 
Uh, Jerusalem Post. Last minute, Adelson flushes Trump campaign with cash. Sheldon Adelson gave a record $5 million for Trump inauguration. Time, Sheldon Adelson, all Israel, all the time. So the biggest contributor to Trump's campaign is Sheldon Adelson, an Israel first Zionist who is obsessed with having a temple rebuilt and having the embassy in Jerusalem and having the capital be Jerusalem. Here's Haritz. Adelson reportedly disappointed with Trump over Jerusalem embassy move delay. And uh, GOP mega donor Adelson furious over Tillerson's Israel comments report. And here's Adelson furious over Trump's waffling on Jerusalem embassy. So Trump didn't do it immediately, so he's pissed. But when Trump finally did announce the embassy move, Sheldon off- Adelson offers to pay for the embassy. I mean, over-the-top insanity here. And they, all these Jews and Christians think the, anti- the Antichrist is coming and Jesus is returning with Trump. For many, here's CNN, for me, many evangelicals, Jews, Jerusalem is about prophecy, not politics. Here's Newsweek. Will Trump hasten the arrival of the Messiah? Jews and evangelicals think so. CNN, why evangelicals are, quote, ecstatic about Trump's Jerusalem move. Uh, New York Times opinion, with the embassy move, Jerusalem, a biblical Trump. Look, there's Cyrus with Trump on the inside. And the Jerusalem Post, Trump's election heralds coming of Messiah, says Derry, some uh, rabbi guy. And they're... U.S. speeds up timetable for moving embassy to Jerusalem. So Trump appoints Bolton, who is a total Zionist, won the Zionist of uh, Guardian of Zionist Award. Switched in Pompeo to uh, Secretary of State. New tortured Hasperi lady from the CIA. It is looking like we're going to have war with Iran. False flag to blow up the dome. So let me know in the comments what you think of my theories and these uh, predictions by Alex Jones. Is this predictive programming in Game of Thrones? Uh, Comment, subscribe, like, share, all the fun stuff. I'm Adam Green with No More News. Thank you for watching, and that's all for today.